Hello and welcome to the Dead on Arrival podcast, presented by the Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Thank God for the testimonies and the blood of the Lamb. I want to take a moment just to share a word of encouragement with you before we head downstairs to enjoy some black eyed peas some collard greens and as we bring 2022 to a close and, and just so that you know those of you who are worshiping with us today if you have some family or friends who weren't able to be here or if you desire to worship this evening at 10 o'clock uh, Union will have their service at 10 10 o'clock I'll be there at Union service eventually and also uh, Mother Church is having their service at 10 o'clock. So the pastors had to come support me because they couldn't support each other. <laughs> they both have their services at 10 o'clock, so they can't be at each other's service, but we all came together. We typically would be together, the three churches, for the year-end service. We wanted to do it a little bit differently this year because we know that as our membership is aging, some of you may not be able to get out at night, so we wanted to have a worship service in the daytime and then also provide opportunities for you to worship this evening. So if you'd like to worship this evening at 10 o'clock, you have a couple of options. Mother Church, which will have their worship service at the Westin on the riverfront, or Union Baptist Church, which is located at 26 and Carter Street. Are you all streaming your service as well tonight? So the service will be streamed at Union as well. So I want to just thank you for being with us today. Praise God. Let's put our hands together for the testimony. We've been focusing this year from the book of Philippians and the third chapter. And verse 12 and 13 where we, we have actually focused on what it means to continue to press toward the mark. So, Father, we thank you for what you've done to bring us to the end conclusion of this year collectively, and we ask that you would bless us now as we come to this final day of this year, seeking your guidance, asking your spirit to lead us, praying your hedge of protection over our very steps. May every step we take be guided by your sovereign and divine will, and may you continue to keep us protected with the angels of mercy watching over us, and most importantly, with your grace sustaining us. Be with us in this preaching moment that it might accomplish the purpose for which the word is being sent. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight. You are our Lord. You are our Redeemer. You are our strength. We pray that you would anoint the ears to hear, that we might be transformed. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. As you can see the sign behind me, it says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. I'm going to read it again in the... Uh, in, in the um, New Living Translation, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. And what I wanted to share with you is that as we, as I begin to reflect on 2022, I have to admit that I come to the end of this year with some things on my mind. And so I want to use that as my talk about, I have, I've got some things on my mind. And if you give me just a few minutes, I'm not going to share them all but I have maybe a few that I would like to share with you, a few things on my mind. First, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, and he is actually incarcerated, and he's been locked up. There are individuals 
who are looking at his circumstances and and they are drawing conclusions about his circumstances and the first thing that was on Paul's mind and the thing that is on my mind is found in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 12 and this is what he says and I want you to know dear brothers and sisters or in the King James versions brothers and sisters I want you to know that the things which happened to me I want to talk about those things which happened because all of us have had some things that have happened and when we look at the things that have happened over this year and perhaps beyond just this year but in our lives as we look back over our lives as you've heard in the testimonies the powerful testimonies that have been shared as you look back over these things that have happened in our lives there is a tendency for us to draw conclusions as to how these things will or have shaped or will impact us and all I want to share with you today as you've heard through the testimonies in a very brief way I think if I make this succinct it will stay with you that is the things which have happened to you can be processed in several ways there is a philosophical way that we typically process things which is a cyclical process of things we process life as going, have you ever heard someone say, hey, how you doing? I used to have a neighbor. I say, how you doing today? Mr. Parks, he says, same suit, just warmed over. Have you ever heard that, sir? Same suit, just warmed over. It's a cyclical way of understanding life. And, and when I say cyclical, it's a cycle, it's a circle. It's, it's as if you are on a treadmill, you are running in place, but nothing really significant ever changes. That's 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 a way that sometimes people process the things that have happened to them. It's going to be the same thing tomorrow. It's going to be the same thing in 2023. It will be no difference. It's the same thing. You go to sleep, you wake up. You go to sleep, you wake up, and you keep on doing that until it's all over. Uh, but 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 there's also another way uh, that sometimes you can process the things that have happened, and that is in a linear way. And a linear way is to see that the things that happen actually do have some impact on our lives and, and we have the ability to to impact the way we respond to the things that have happened to us because the things that have happened as sometimes we say we, we will understand it better by and by we don't always know the significance of the things that happen when they happen there are times when things happen in our lives that we don't always understand the significance of it and so I want to I want to caution us today against drawing premature conclusions about the things which have happened. And that's what Paul is trying to help those at the Philippian church to understand. And he actually says it. He says, and I pray, listen, that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding for I want you to understand what really matters. So I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. And for this will bring much joy and glory and praise to God. And he says, and I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Now there's a third way. There's a circle, a cyclical way of looking at life. There's also a linear way. It's more of a straight line that you look at life. You go from point A to point B. But there's also a, a a theological way of processing life and if you can grasp this if you can open your mind to understand the theological perspective of everything that happens in your life they were saying Paul we are so upset that you have been unjustly incarcerated that you are locked up and you really should not be locked up but you are have you had things to happen to you that slowed you down, uh, things that sort of were designed to keep you in your place, so to speak. You, you wanted to move forward, but you had some situations to come up and you weren't able to move forward. They, they slowed down your progress. When I look at what happens 
in 2022 and even before, and I look at history, that there are always challenges about the things that happen that slow down progress. Social, you see socially there's a, a design to try to slow down social equality and progress. We're going to change some laws so that people aren't able to participate in democracy. As a matter of fact, there's a mindset that says that only the weak and the poor should have access to democracy, but really the best way to live in a governed society is through having someone up at the top. Uh, and, and so you see that in our society, there is an attempt to try to keep people in their place, to slow down progress. We see it not only in, in the social, we see it in the political, we see it in the economic sphere where there is a design to try to keep poor people poor. And the poor keep getting poorer and the rich keep getting richer. Our founding fathers were were keen to the possibility of what would happen if you did not have an educated mass of society. And so they felt that if you don't have an, uh, a society that is comp, uh, able to, um, to, to succeed and excel, it would destroy the society. And, but, but you will still see where there is a lack of opportunity to education. I, I heard you, Sister Bibi, talk about your daughter having to provide uh, financial assistance to people trying to get to college. How many brilliant minds that we see in our communities. We see them. We see the children. They're growing up, but they happen to grow up in families where there are not a, there's not a lot of financial resources and they don't have the opportunity to go off to college or they may need that extra help to get off to get uh, a decent education. And we see these things slowing down progress. We see it happening on a moral level. We see it happening on a political level. We see it happening on a social level. But I'm going to stand here to tell you today that there is no institution in society like the church. There's no, no institution in society like the church. There, there is no institution in society that can do what the church can do. Now, there are things that the church can do that other institutions do. And, and there are things that other, t other institutions can do that can help our lives be, have a better quality of life. But there is no place like the church. So my, 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 my proposition is to, as my friend Dr. Drummer would say, let the church be the church. Uh, don't let the church try to do what every other institution in society is designed to do while we are, are being negligent in the responsibility the church has let the church do what the church can do and what the church can do is touch society with the insight that Paul is sharing with those who at the church of Philippi and here's what he says he says I know you are processing the things which have happened through the lens of your natural mind. But because you are a part of the church, you have the ability to process the things which have happened to you and the things which happen in our society and the things which happen in our lives and the things which happens in our families and the things which happen in our church in a different way. This is what you need to grasp is that everything you process is all relative. See, see when, when, when you experience things that happen that you don't like, the things that happen that you don't want, who wants to be stuck in the hospital? Who wants to hear about the tragic loss of their loved one? Who wants to have some kind of ailment to take a root in their lives? Who wants to see their parents aging and declining? None of us want to see those things, and yet all of those things are a part of our experience. But when the church understands how to process the things which have happened, Happen, it enhances the way and the quality that we live our lives. Here's, here's what Paul is saying. Watch. He says, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that everything, some of you missed it, because we only want to talk about the good things. We only want to elevate the positive things. But Paul has come to an understanding that will bless our lives if we can grasp this. He said, not just the good things, but all of the stuff. That's the positive things 
and the negative things. Now, I know some of you are going to argue with me, so Pastor, how can you say that everything is good? I mean, now, I know most things are good, but I don't think that slavery for 400 years was good. I don't know how you process that as being good. I, I don't understand how you process tragedies like the Holocaust as something being positive or constructive or good. I, I don't understand how you can process the tragic loss of a loved one in a tragic situation as possibly being good. But listen to what Paul says. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me, everything that has happened to me, everything that has happened to me has helped to spread the good news. If I can get this in my spirit, that everything that happens has a spiritual implication that ultimately connects to the salvific purposes of God. Oh, everything that happens has a spiritual link to it that somehow connects to God's ultimate purpose of producing salvation in society. Let me say it one more time. Everything that happens has a spiritual link to it that ultimately helps us to see how God is at work to produce salvation in the human experience. Paul learned this lesson, and the way I know he learned this lesson is he said it as he was talking to the church at Rome. He says, for this I know, all things, all things, not just some, but all things work together. They're working together. And when I draw my conclusions about what was happening and what has happened to me, and I limit my conclusion to the impact that it had on me personally, the impact that it had on my ego, the impact that it had on my identity, the impact that it had on my title, the impact that it had on my role, when I limit my understanding of my experiences to just that, I'm missing the possibility of seeing what God is seeking to do in my experiences. So watch, he says, now, I know I'm locked up. I know they think that they're preventing me from fulfilling my purpose. I know that I'm being held in this one spot. Sometimes we get held in a particular place. But just understand mm, that it is never the circumstances or the situation that determines if we are suffering. It is always our mindset. So while Paul was locked up, he was not suffering. But those who were watching him thought that he was. While Paul was incarcerated, he was not suffering because his mindset was placed in a position where he understood that there was something good that God was doing in the midst of his circumstances. So whatever your circumstances are, just understand that God will use your circumstances in some way that blows your mind to help somebody get a little bit closer to the purpose of God's existence here on this world. That, that God desires for us to know not just this human and this fleshly experience, but God desires to connect with us in a spirit way whereby, whereby we can understand that everything that happens to us is ultimately happening for the glory of God. Isn't that hard to process? I, I told you I got some things on my mind. I've been thinking about how all these things that have happened are still connected to God's purpose in life. And Paul says, now listen, I want you to know that the things that have happened here has helped 
to spread the good news for everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And listen, because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Because you were able to tell somebody what happened to you, Sister Valerie, somebody here now can speak in confidence that it might look like it's bad right now, but I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And not only do I say it, but I can say it with confidence because I saw someone who's going through it and I could see them standing and testifying about the goodness of the Lord, even though they went through anger, even though they went through pain, even though they went through tears, even though they went through suffering. I know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what I could ask or think. So how does Paul arrive at this place in his mind? I got I got some things on my mind. I'm telling you, I got some things. We could be here to the mob. I've been thinking about these things for some time, but I just want to share this one thing with you. I want to share with you that when you lock your perspective and your opinion and your conclusion around where you are today, you have failed to understand that you are in an evolutionary process, that God is building something in you through the experience, not for you to conclude at the point of the experience, but because of the experience, God is going to use that experience as he did with Joseph. You might have meant it for evil. The enemy may have meant it for evil, but God is going to use that thing for good. And because I've gone through it, God is going to elevate me so that I'll be able to tell somebody else about the goodness of the Lord. That he is able to do what I never thought was possible. So how do we get there? I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to be done. If you think that you have to wait until the battle is over. Because the victory is somewhere out there. You're going to suffer, and here's the reason why. You're going to suffer because you are placing your praise in a place where you are not. You are not in the future. You are in the present. If I'm preserving my praise for the future, I can't release my praise until the future. But the praise is on the inside, hollering, screaming, trying to get out. And I'm exhausting my energy, holding my praise in because I don't think it's the right time to release the praise. But let me tell you that the praise can be released not after the battle is over. You don't have to wait until the battle is over. No, 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 no. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. That means the blessing is already present. You just haven't received it yet, but it's already present. And if you deposit your praise where the blessing is already, you will find that you won't have to suffer because you've already been delivered from the thing that God is in the process of delivering you from. You know, it's, it's what Paul says. He says, he says, I'm crucified with Christ. <laughs> he said, I, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm still living. It's a contradiction, isn't it? I'm, I'm dead and I'm also alive. And yet the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the spirit. So I'm alive right now 
because the Spirit of God is on the inside. And because the kingdom of God is on the inside, where Christ is, there is liberty. Where Christ is, there is deliverance. Where Christ is, there is blessings. Where Christ is, I'm already an overcomer. And if I'm waiting to overcome what I've already overcome, I won't get my... Listen, have you ever been watching... And I did this. I, I was watching... Uh, I was, I was watching football on a stream service. But I was talking to my friend who was watching it on a, a internet, on a network service. And so he said, yeah, they got the touchdown. I'm still waiting for the touchdown to happen. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to win or not. He's like, yeah, they got it. I'm still, I, I don't have a praise because I, I don't see it yet. But if I'm watching what God has shown me in the spirit, when you're on the network, <laughs> when you're on the network, you see it as it happens. We're in the spirit, so we're on the stream right now. That's all right. We're just streaming what's going on in life. But this is what Jesus already said. Don't worry about the world. I've already overcome the world. In this world, you're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulations. But don't you worry about none of that because I've already overcome. That's on the network. But in this flesh, we are streaming the service. So we haven't seen it yet. And we're waiting until we see it before we can get our praise on. But the Lord said, I've already blessed you. I've already scored the touchdown. The game is already won. Why are you walking around as if though you don't know that you're more than a conqueror to him that loves you? By and by. When the morning comes, all the saints gather together at home. We'll tell the story. Woo! Of how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to wait until 2023 to get excited because everything that God has purposed for you is already in you right now. I'm excited that God has brought me through 2022. And I'm excited about the prospects of going into 2023. But nothing excites me more than the fact that I'm living right now. Because right now is all I really have. Yesterday is gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine, but Lord for thy sake, teach me to take one day at a time. The things which has happened. The only thing that can cause you to not praise God is going to be your memory, listen, of the conclusions that you drew about the detrimental impact of the things that have happened. And you get stuck in that place. And God said, I never intended for that experience to produce that response from you. That experience was designed to get you to where you are now. And since I brought you through it, I didn't leave you there, but I brought you through it just as I brought you to this moment through that moment you can rejoice that I will also take you through the moments that are ahead of you 
Thank you for joining us. See you next week. We upload our podcast every Sunday at 7 p.m. Thanks again and have a great day.